So some of you may know, I grew up on a pig and sheep farm. <laughs> yeah. And when I was just a little guy, but I was still a little guy, but I was about six, seven, and a man came on, a stranger. Everyone went, hey, I don't recognize that fella. Stranger came on the farm. He came on the farm because we need to find a new well, drill a new well in the water there. So he brought this stick. He was a weird old coot walking around in a circle, just doing weird things to weirder things. And he had a stick. And he said he's going to use it as a dowsing rod. It's like a bent thing. He said he could f somehow find the water with a stick there like that. I was a little scared as a little kid. I thought, oh, I hope they don't c catch me up in the bales with the kittens. So this is what I did. I said, let's try this out here. Now, the deck can be shuffled. It's a shuffled deck, which is kind of sweet. And Chris here, shuffled deck. If I take a few cards and I put them up like this, I could ask you, do you have any idea which cards are red, which cards are black? And you probably wouldn't. So look, let's do this. I'm going to get a dowsing rod here and we're going to try this out. So Chris, you take this card, you take it. It's a black card, you take that. And use it like a, kind of like a dowsing rod and touch a card. Maybe a card you think might be black. Let's see, we'll try uh, that one. Okay, that's, we're going to do five. One, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, and one more. Uh, five, right there, all right. Now, I think you'll agree you could have touched any one of the cards in the pack, but we got it da narrowed down to five cards, and you used your dousing rod, all right? We'll put those there. Can I get your dousing rod back there, buddy? Okay, we'll get put that right there. Now, I went through. You touched any five cards with your dousing rod. Let's try it again. This time, let's do it with uh, some red card. We'll do it with a red card. We got a red card here. There we go. I'm going to give you the dousing rod. Here we go. Now, keep in mind, this is kind of a shuffle pack. I go through, you touch one. Oh, yeah, there, I think, touch another. There, touch another. Now, each one of these is a 50-50 chance. If we can get a few of them going there, that'd be good. Okay, here we go. So what do we got? We got one, two, three, four, one more. Oh, we got, oh, we got all five, okay. So you narrowed it down here. We got a total of five. I'm hoping that when we, we did it the first time here, can I have you hang here like this? All right, now, you could have touched any of these shuffle deck. Reds, blacks. Ooh, nice start. Very dramatic. Ooh, Christopher, looking good. Yep. Yep. Now, what about these last two? Let's see. Ooh, very impressive indeed. I start always by turning the deck face up, and I go through, and I say, look, if I... Um, Stick up a couple of cards here. Do you have any idea, do you have any sense maybe about uh, which cards are red and which cards are black? Do you have any sense? And they, I give them a chance. And just like that, I've got myself set up. Because what I do is this. I go through the deck, okay? And again, they can't see this. And I up jog, it's called. I stick up to the top any cards that are opposite colors. In this case, the reds. The reds are going up. Keep all the blacks down. The reds go up, reds, and until I get five, uh, five black on the bottom and five on the top. Once I'm in that situation, sometimes you'll have to go a little far farther than you think to get them. They don't always perfectly alternate, of course, but once I'm there, I'm now in my setup because I go, do you have any sense? And they say no, and as I say, of course you don't have any sense. I spin all these cards out, all the reds, put them on them the bottom of the deck, turn everything over, and as I'm casually talking, I cut the cards. Now. It looks like a fair cut, but this is a false cut. This is the one false cut I use a lot. You guys have seen it here in the channel before, where what I'm doing is I'm doing a, with my right first finger, I'm kick cutting a block of cards from the top into my left hand. Then I put these on top and I keep a break with my thumb between the two halves. Then I riffle the back end, I riffle off cards off the back like this, take them, put them back on top, and then riffle right down to the break, take those on top, okay? Real casual, just looks like I can give the cards a couple of cuts, but it's a complete deck. It doesn't, it's a complete deck. It doesn't disturb the order of my cards, and I still have my five and five on the bottom, five red, five black, okay? So I'm there. 
we use the presentation as a perfect excuse to think of any one or to uh, see do you have any sense no it'd be hard to know which ones are red which ones are black now since I know my reds are on the bottom I say let's try something and I turn over the top card sometimes it'll be black sometimes it'll be red but I, I turn them until I get to a red one hand this to someone and say touch we're gonna touch five uh, and I'll often say let's touch some cards how about four nah let's make it harder let's do it five and I kind of play with the presentation that way so the whole thing has a flow to it okay as if I'm just kind of talking off the top of my head Five cards are touched, okay, three, four, and five, and I outlaw, I out jog them all. And as I spread them out and say, okay, you could have touched any card, my left thumb is going through here until I spread these bottom cards out, and with my eyes, because I find it easier to see with my eyes than my feet, is I go one, two, three, four, I've got five cards, and I'm gonna get a little break with my left pinky, okay? I kind of separate those, and under the deck, here's the view, I'm getting a break with my pinky. I'm gonna come over here, kick these to the side, grab everything from the top with my middle finger and thumb, and I'm going to lift, lift, basically lift everything a little bit except for the bottom five cards. There. And I'm going to make it look like I strip these cards out, but what I actually do is these bottom cards come along for the ride underneath, I pull them out, keeping a break with my pinky, okay? I pull them out and then as a natural gesture, I kind of swing back here and maybe at this point I say you use and I grab grab all the cards back those five cards so once they come out maybe I'll put the deck here grab those five cards and turn everything over for a second and gesture or maybe I'll grab those five cards like I said and, and point to it but these go down and the flow it looks exactly like those are the five cards they touched now I then spread out the card and say, I tell you what, let's try it again for the black cards. And as I spread these out, I'm going to see my bottom five cards. Now, these bottom five cards are the five cards they touched last time. I don't know if they're black or red or whatever they're going on. They could have uh, hairy moles all over their face and shoot a lot of pool late at night until the cops show up and, and sort of close the place down, thinking there's some racketeer going on around these pots. I don't know. Uh, so I get a break above the bottom five cards again, and I'm just going to cut those cards using that false cut to the top. So now they've got rid of, which leaves me with my original five black cards still sitting pretty on the bottom. Sitting pretty on the bottom. Vera, everyone loves that girl. I go through and have five more cards, and I apologize, I have, uh, in this case, a black card. Say, we're gonna use this as a dowsing rod again. I'm gonna spread out, touch five cards. They touch five cards, okay? Now, I love playing up the math or the improbability, impossibility of what's going on here. And again, I do the exact same thing where I apparently kick these five cards out of the pack and say you used uh, the dowsing rod again this time, drop them there, and the switch is done completely. The Vernon Substitute Transfer. Now, this is not an opening trick. It's more involved than the quick opening trick, but this is a great closing effect. You do this late night in a bar for some people or a club, and they're going to swear something absolutely inexplicable and supernatural happened. Let's see how you did. Ooh, very impressive start. Nice job. Wonder how you did. Oh, nice. Now I gotta say, I showed this to someone the other day, and they actually were able to get three in a three in a row. Very nice. So I act like each of these is more impossible than the last. Sometimes I even go, "That's ridiculous." I have, but if you look, I have never. I've tried this myself. I've never once perfectly. You are crazy. 